Hey, what's up guys? Vin here from VD Engineering and welcome to a new video. This video will show you guys how you can design a rocket engine nozzle by using MATLAB and SOLIDWORKS, which are very popular engineering tools, especially used in academia. Rocket engines are very popular because they're used on any launch vehicle or spacecraft as well. The nozzle is a very important component which uses fluid mechanics and compressible flow to generate a force to propel the rocket forward. So any rocket does have a nozzle attached to it. I have made two videos in the past on how rocket engines work and how the nozzle generates force by explaining to you in a step-by-step -step process. If you haven't watched that, I'll put cards below so you can actually watch those and then come on to this video because this video is more complicated. This specific video will look at using the method of characteristics, which is a very popular tool used in the aerospace industry to design rocket engines. And you can actually use this method to design a nozzle to your specific design conditions. So I'll be showing you guys step by step how I'm doing this. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay guys, so here we have a design problem with the parameters chamber pressure, temperature, force, mass flow rate, altitude, coefficient of heats, and R. So looking at the first two values, it is the pressure and temperature inside your, your nozzle chamber. For example, the space shuttle uses the boosters which contain LOX and LH2 fuel at a specified temperature. The force is what your engine will produce to move the rocket forward. Or you can also use the mass flow rate. So choose either one and I'll show you guys why in a second. The altitude is important because we want to find out at what point we want to optimize the nozzle performance. Keep in mind that the nozzle expansion is based on your external pressure as explained in my video on how a rocket engine works. So at this example, we are choosing 7.5 kilometers. This will be based on your mission parameters, so you can just choose any value for now. The coefficient of heats is your gamma, which is for air is 1.4, as you all know, it is CP over CV, and CP is your constant from the formula MCP delta T in chemistry, as you all know that. And your R is your gas constant, 355 kilojoules over kilogram times Kelvin. So you can input your force or your mass flow rate. And the reason why we input either force or mass flow is because one is a function of the other. So we cannot have both because it will cause problems. It's given by force equals mass flow rate times exit velocity plus the exit pressure at the nozzle minus the external pressure in the atmosphere times your exit area. So exit area will be calculated based on your method of characteristics. Your exit velocity is simply exit Mach times your speed of sound, which will be based on the isentropic flow relations. Your external pressure is based on the atmospheric pressure outside. And your nozzle ex exit pressure would be also calculated based on isentropic flow relations. And that gives you the force. So finally, we can use our algorithm, which will help us solve the problem. So based on the exit pressure, which we will calculate on isentropic flow, you can get the pressure relation. On that, you can get your exit velocity, temperature, speed of sound, and Mach number. Then you can use the prandtl mayer expansion function, which is used for expansion waves, to get your max wall angle. So based on the max wall angle, you can get the number of wall divisions, and then you can calculate your positions along the center line. Then you can finally calculate the nozzle wall positions and then export the points into CAD. If you, <laughs> if you guys are totally confused right now, like don't worry about it, I will explain each step in detail. But this is the overall architecture of the problem and I feel that this should be brought forward so you can get a better idea as we go along the actual code. So now I'll show you guys the actual code and, and keep in mind that you can download this. I will up upload it to a link and then you can just use that for your own practice. Let's get started. Okay guys, so here is the code written in MATLAB and keep in mind that you can use any programming language for this because it simply uses math equations and if statements. So here we have the first input value which means that it's scanning stuff of Excel and every programming language can read Excel files. So the first step is that you to input all the parameters or the given values which is shown over here. I'm inputting pressure, temperature and everything else. Next, I'm calculating my exit pressure as you can see is a function of altitude. So I'm saying that if altitude is between 11,000 and 25,000 meters, then do then this is my temperature and pressure. And same goes for the rest. This is can be found anywhere of the NASA website. Next, I have my calculation beginning. 
So first up, I have my pressure ratio here, which is the pressure outside over the pressure inside the chamber. And then I'm calculating another pressure ratio. From this, I can get my, my uh, midsection temperature, which means that it is a function of my chamber temperature and my gas constant as well as G. So here G is gamma, which is 1.4, which is CP over CV. Next, I have my midsection pressure at the, you know, the, the nozzle between the converging and the diverging section, which can be found with this, the function of gamma. Same with velocity at, at the midsection, which can be found with this equation here. And my exit velocity, which can be found of as a function of my pressure ratio and my temperature. So in this case, I'm looking at if mass, flow rate, or force is inputted. So in this case, I have a statement which is looking at what number is there. And if one is zero, then it's invalid. So here, I'm calculating my exit temperature, which is very important. It's a function of my chamber temperature multiplied by my pressure ratio times the exponent to gamma minus one over gamma, which is a very common isentropic flow formula. And my exit speed of sound, which is a function of temperature only, because sound is given by temperature square root gamma RT. So it only depends on that. From this, I can find my exit Mach number, which is what we need to begin the method of characteristics as it is a function of Mach number. So Mach number is given by speed of your fluid over speed of sound. And in this case, it is VE over AE. So now we have our Mach number and we can actually begin our method of characteristics calculation. So I have my throat radius, which is given by 35 millimeters. This value you can choose yourself. So I chose this value for now. Based on your parameters, you might have something else. And this is just to convert radians into degrees. And then I created an empty vector for my x-axis points. It does help to pre-allocate arrays in programming languages to save memory. So in MATLAB, this is called pre-allocation where you can specify an array beforehand. So here is my parental mayor function. It's a very long function. So I'm breaking it up into A and B and VPM is a function of X, which is M. So in this case, prandtl mayer function is a function of your Mach number. Here I have X, which represents my Mach number M. And, and MATLAB function, you simply say at X and then just put the function in here. So A and B are these terms, which are constant values respectively. Okay, so now let's calculate our theta max, which is the maximum wall angle. Now this function is given by 0.5 times your panel mayor of your exit mark number. So you plug in your exit mark number here, you get some value and you convert it into degrees for now because I want to use degrees in my calculation. Next I'm using my dt. So dt is my delta angle. Now this is a numerical method. So you have to use intervals and go in small steps. So that is what I'm doing over here. Next, I'm using my Mach number and a for loop to compute my center line points. So this is a function of your initial Mach number at the exit and it's based off what you look at for that. So first up, we have an array which is X and I'm initializing it. So I'm using a value which is slightly above the Mach number at the exit, which is 1.01 times that. And basically I'm plugging this into my function here I'm zeroing it, which is F0 means find the roots of the function at this X point, and then calculate your X values based off here. So this is simply tan of the angle, and then you can simply, simply keep pushing it forward. If you're getting confused, I have the, the you know, the, uh, I have the B-roll at the side, so you can see what's actually going on as I move along this loop. So when that is done, I have my right running slopes of the characteristic lines. And then I can simply do my left running slopes, which is a simple geometry. And SL is that, which is your negative of the value. So it's just simply a reflection. Then we can actually plot this, so we can get a plot which looks like that. Um, you have your, your P and your length. So I'm just plotting everything in here. Okay guys, so here is, now we have our wall left. So we need to calculate the points on the nozzle wall. So at this point here, we have calculated everything up to the center line and the reflected as well. So here's our wall calculation. So we can start off with assuming that the angle is a function of the angle max. So here I'm converting it back into radians because I want to use tan and MATLAB uses that. So we can't use degrees in MATLAB. So in this case, I'm simply assuming that my wall section starts off at this angle, which is same as the maximum wall angle on the incident side. And it's simply moving like this, right? So it's going to zero because in the rocket nozzle, you have to make sure that the nozzle ending is flat 
So, 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 so when the fluid ex exits the nozzle, it's parallel to the center line. So this means that the angle should go from your maximum angle to zero. And that's what's going on over here. I'm basically calculating my force to wall section, as you can see. So if I, let's say if I comment this out, right? If I comment this out, and if I do a quick plot. So here you can see that the wall has, has been calculated. So the nozzle will simply occur like this along the as you go along and if I comment all this out and if I do a replot so let's see here so okay so here I've commented everything out and then I can do another run of the function okay so using the side by side you can look at you can see this function this for loop here is calculating the slope of each line right so because the line in the graph is given by a slope and a y intercept so this b is your y intercept and your s is your slope of each line here. So I'm using a for loop because it's multiple reflections and I can go along the nozzle here. So what you can see in this picture is my actual nozzle itself. And you know, it's only half because the nozzle is symmetric and then you can simply export these points into CAD and then do a reflection. So until here, I'm doing a, an entire for loop to calculate the wall points. And the angle is going from the maximum angle slowly to zero as I go along. So lastly, I have my last point, which is Forced. I'm using brute force for this because I want the angle to be zero here. If I zoom in, you can actually take a look. Now this calculation is based on geometry. You know, I can't show you everything here because it'll take very long. You have to, you know, download the code and actually do some practice to see how it looks like. But the general idea is that when the nozzle slopes along, it has to be from the maximum angle to zero. And that is how with, by using angles and, and with the reflected line, you can use um, trigonometry to find the exact x and y point right it's, it's, it's quite it does take a little bit of time but it's quite simple to figure out after so i'm not going to be spending too much time here so when i have all my wall points my nozzle is essentially done and i can export the points into solidworks but first we need to export it into excel which is simply doing which is simply done by this transpose function over here so transpose simply takes an array and makes it and you know flips it around so I can export the points as Excel values in a cell into this function here. So I have PTS and if I quickly open that here, so you guys, you can see that MATLAB does work with Excel. And if I go into points, if I drag it in my visible window, you can see that the points are being exported over here. So in this case, I have my X, my Y and my Z. Um, you have to also export Z because when you export Z points, you have a full element and these points here can be deleted after. So now let's export these points into SOLIDWORKS and see what the nozzle looks like. To save your points in the SOLIDWORKS, you first need to delete the not available points, which means that you must have only numeric values in that sheet. Next, you can delete your first sheet if you would like. And then you have to save it as a text tab delimited in the notepad file, which means that then you can import this into any file editor. So click on save. And then when you open it into notepad, you should look like this with X, Y, and Z points everywhere. Next, you open SOLIDWORKS and open the new part. You go on insert curve and curve through X, Y, Z points, and then find that point. If you get something like this, file name is not valid or found, you simply close that Excel spreadsheet and then and then retry. You should get the points over here. So that is it. So that is your nozzle curve based off the method of characteristics and then you can create a nozzle from it. So in this case here, I'm creating an offset sketch and just creating my nozzle contour, a solid body in this case, and then you can use this into your simulations. I have another video showing how you can use ANSYS to create a CFD simulation of this nozzle and that is a separate video which is also based on this code so I, I recommend you watch that if you're interested in that as well. And with that being said, I have now showed you guys how you can convert MATLAB points into SOLIDWORKS and then actually do simulations of a rocket nozzle based on the method of characteristics. I hope you guys learned something new. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.